Peace, love and life family. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, tuning in um, for another story time with more of my. It's been a while. I was reading a day late and a dollar short, um, and I just kind of stopped by Terry McMillan, and I just kind of stopped. So, it's been a while. I missed you guys. I miss reading to you all. My nephew sleeps, so let's get it in while we can. Um, let me set my phone up. I'm going to record on here as well to post on my Instagram. I got a story time with more of my Instagram just to give snippets so they can go follow my YouTube page. All right. I'm just going to turn this around. We're going to do video. Do I need to turn the light on? Or is this natural light good enough? Let's see. I know I'm trying to get my life right. feel like going natural today like the sun is shining i feel like y'all can see me good yeah we're gonna go with that we're gonna roll with the natural um real quick let me take my detox pills it's 12 o'clock i gotta take four every four hours so i'm on number two brother ig um i'm on a detox clean so uh he has the first one is called parasites formula and it has black walnut hole, wormwood, and golden seal. The pack that I'm taking now is the colon formula, cascara, sagrada, cinna leaf, and fennel seed. And the last one I'll take is for the mucus formula. And it has mullein, cayenne pepper, elderberry, and fenugreek in it. But yeah, so real quick, let me take pop my foe. Uh, I'm supposed to be... Excuse my French shitting profusely. I uh I think I have a very constipated system because when I'm not on a cleanse or a, I'm on a vegan challenge right now until December 9th. If I'm not on one of them, I'm usually just kind of either not eating that much or eating so much of the bad stuff that I be clogged and I don't have regular bowel movement. So I need this in my life. Let me talk. Mm. And this is my detox water. I got lemon, ginger, and cucumber. All right, perfect. So, I'm about to just hop into it. One of my students, um, about two years ago, two summers ago, um, myself, along with my Brothers of Soul Society, if you have not already checked out my podcast on Anchor called The Exchange, I interviewed Brothers T. Walker and Born King, um, and I uploaded our episode. You can also find that interview on my YouTube channel, Moremy, M-O-R-E-M-Y. It has a red logo with an M on the inside. But yeah, those are some good brothers. So I ran a summer camp with them. Another one of our good artist friends, brother um, Quay Weston. He also has a podcast on Anchor. He's taking a little a little break. He's going to pop out back on us um, in the new year. But yeah, so I um, ran a summer camp with those gentlemen. And it was an arts music summer camp for the youth. And it was really nice. And I learned a lot about running a summer camp. You know, being around kids for an extended period of time during summer. Um, you know having activities and things yada 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 so anywho one of the students mother has taken a liking to me and she's been very supportive and i appreciate her shout out to miss veronica and she gifted me this book called complementarity by i don't want to butcher this author's name but it's african so i might um in walamu k bomani Baruti. And I have not read it all the way through. I started it and haven't finished it. But I'll read the back and then I'm just going to hop right into the first chapter, okay? So, complementarity. The couple is the bedrock of the nation. Without it, there's no family, no people. Without couples, there can be no family to procreate and rear confident, untroubled, anchored children. No viable, community-respecting generation can be born to continue the process of life, living, building, and defending. God damn, this incident about to choke me out. <coughs> Hold on. Sheesh. When you're too spiritual. Goodness. Oh. African couples must be whole, individually, and as one. They must be able to trust themselves and each other implicitly. And that is what makes it imperative that we carefully choose our mates for African reasons. We must choose with vision, for we are the vanguard. Our unions have purpose for greater than the wants or needs of either member individually or the couple together. We do not bemoan this privilege. In fact, it is just the opposite. We are soldiers in love with forming beautiful families 
families, rearing happy, thinking children, building strong, lasting communities, raising a mighty nation, and removing all enemies. For African warrior scholar compliments, there is no other reason for being. So I already got an idea of where this book is going. And I'm excited about it. So, let's get to rolling. <clears throat> Hold on, y'all. Get my camera right. Hold on. Let me back here. Move this up here. There we go. Common sense, Morgan. All right. Here we go. Chapter one. Chapter one. <sighs> Well, wait, the table of contents. So, you got complementarity, choices, trust, love and happiness, vision, marriage, sex, procreativity, family, rearing warriors, Alunta Continua, selected warrior compliments, reading lists, and end notes. Okay. So, chapter one, complementarity. The determining mode of the African worldview is harmony. The goal is that of discovering the point of harmonious interaction so that interferences become neutralized, allowing constructive energy to flow and to be received. This is a quote from Mariba Ani. Hey, I love you too, twin. Mayat speaks to a progressive generative spirit to appropriative cooperative movement. And as a core principle of Maya, complementarity speaks to two differently qualified yet intimately interacting beings, forces. Wait a minute, let me slow down and back up. First of all, um, if you don't know what Maya is or the goddess of Maya, um, pretty much it's kind of like the Ten Commandments, but there is the 42 laws of Maya, and it's just pretty much a, a way of living, like uh, within union. And apparently back in commit or egypt uh we have these laws and rules in place and we didn't need police for thousands of years because people conducted themselves according to the law of maya and i would go as far as to believe that you know you had systems of elders and people in your community that kept you in check kept you accountable um so someone commented on my page the other day that you know we should bring shaming back in regards to like men not sticking around and raise their kids and stuff like if we shame like we did back in the day when no one wanted to be caught dead without not doing right by their family um we'd be a lot better off but because we're in the times we're in you can't shame nobody can't say shit about nothing that's out of order out of line chow so um uh, but but Google research if uh, you need more info on my app. But pretty much it's just, you know, a, a lifestyle of principles to abide by um, that allows you to flow wholly amongst everyone. So my app speaks to a progressive generative spirit to a procreative cooperative movement. And as a core principle of my yacht, complementarity speaks to two differently qualified yet intimately interacting beings forces or things diligently and continuously working toward a healthy holistic balance it is the drive to maintain equilibrium between two beings forces or things that must work together if either expects to survive and reach its full potential in the community of their universe talents and different powers must be cooperatively tied to a joint mission slash vision in order to achieve complementarity so as you can see already like you're not just getting in relationships because somebody cute could they smell good it got to be more structure and basis to your unions especially prior to producing life with one another in terms of a man seeking a woman as a mate and vice versa complementarity this is for geared toward heterosexuals fyi um, in terms of a man seeking a woman as a mate and vice versa, complementarity is the matching, the mating of a man having a dominant male energy with a woman having a dominant female energy. This is according to universal law. Yes, men come with both male and female energies and women come with both female and male energies. But the balance in sexual energies favors their respective sex. Male energy dominates in men and female energy dominates in women. And there's nothing wrong with this. The creator is not in error. Only in the perverted and extremely individualistic Western mind is the argument made that males can be dominated by female energy and vice versa, or that individuals may have equal amounts of male and female energy, or that individuals can be lacking in both male and female energy. So he's calling out a certain group of people that have their beliefs. Um, he says the creator is not in error. 
only in a perverted and extremely individualistic Western mind. Um, and I have another book called Recapturing the African Mind by Bruce Bridges. And he um he gave many examples of how, like, over here in America, we are considered Western. Um, when you look at the map on the globe, we on the West. Uh, Brother Bruce Bridges broke down a lot of examples about how, like, we are really brainwash the world over he was talking about how like in jamaica or even certain parts of africa they're singing about um you know jack frost and all this and, that, and they never see snow like ever um you know we have like the white jesus hanging up in our homes and you know we don't have gods or representations that look like us whereas other religions do so I could go on commentating. Let me just read the daggone book. Um, let me go back. Let me back up a little bit. In terms of a man seeking a woman as a mate and vice versa, complementarity is the matching, the mating of a man having a dominant male energy with a woman having a dominant female energy. This is according to universal law. Yes, men come with both male and female energies and women come with both female and male energies. But the balance in sexual energy favors their respective sex. Male energy dominates in men and female energy dominates in women. And there is nothing wrong with this. The creator is not an error. Only in the perverted and extremely individualistic Western mind is the argument made that males can be dominated by female energy and vice versa. Or that individuals may have equal amounts of male and female energy. Or that, fe or that individuals are lacking in both male and female energy. Nature brings about complementary relationships, male and female attraction. Any other intimate human arrangement, however scientifically defined, formed by any other than a natural heterosexual pairing is the product of a congenital or acquired biochemical imbalance or a socialized god vying psychosis or both feeding each other regardless of cause this is the case the result is an unnaturally created mutation in human relations so pretty much in layman's terms, those who identify as homosexual, transgender, whatever, um, this author is calling out and saying that anything other than a male and female heterosexual relationship is unnatural, out of order, and um, is privy to having some type of biochemical imbalance. Now, I won't say whether or not uh, I disagree, but I do know for a fact that a lot of these foods have chemicals in them that do have us um acting in certain ways that we normally wouldn't for example take the Popeye's chicken shenanigans that has taken place all over um and who is their target market and who is their target advertisers we advertise shit for free um so they got they say billions of dollars in advertising because they know they can drop something in us and then we go berserk about it so i don't really trust these companies and their foods um we know that they put chemicals and stuff and all we can really do is just attempt to do what we can on our own which is why we need to take advantage of those of us that have land or can purchase it we need to be growing our own stuff making our own moves trying to get as far away from the unnatural things because they do change our insides so back to the book Regardless of cause, in this case, the result is an unnaturally created mutation in human relations. Each individual created as male or female before birth comes uniquely equipped with or otherwise has the potential to fully realize gender-specific skills and qualities. Our innately individual sex-specific talents make males and females natural matches. Again, all else, all other contrived matches of adults or adults with children and or animals in the European context are unnatural and therefore artificial and forced, whether consciously or not. Each male and female is allocated his and her strengths and challenges that combine allow for a creative and productive life on earth. Each is able to correct and compensate for each other's deficiencies through their creator-given complementary expertise. The male and female union is a cooperative relationship because no one comes with expertise in all necessary areas. Y'all hear that? The male and female union is a cooperative relationship because no one comes with all expertise in necessary areas, which is why I know a lot of feminists and women who even don't identify as feminists um, but hate patriarchy uh, speak on, you know, well, 
they want to be equal to men. We're not equal to men, period. We cannot... There are things we just don't know and don't experience as women, period. We just don't. Now, are we strong? Do we have intuition? Are we maybe smarter than them? Because we can out overthink and potentially, but we're not the same. And everybody has their value. And so in relationships and being complimentary, you have to allow your partner to utilize their strengths. You can't try to be a man and a woman in a relationship. Pick your role, lady, and let it be the role of the lady. Yeah. Okay. So the male and female union is a cooperative relationship because no one comes with expertise in all necessary areas. Even though a male and female can individually survive with or without procreating, we are unable to reach our full capacity as human beings without partnering with the other sex. No single head can contain all wisdom. And I do believe that as much as I... I have uh, these thoughts of, well, am I going to stay single the rest of my life? Or am I just going to have a boo in different, you know, cities and islands that I tra traverse? Um, but then I'm like, you know, you need partnership because, and this is what I think marriage is important for. Um, people say don't marry for love or marriage is business and whatever. However you view it, I do feel like it's for personal growth um, and that, you can really excel to the next level. Like they say that most men, I've read something somewhere that was saying like they won't even hire some men that aren't married because, you know, they don't have like a certain, they're not at a certain space yet. Whereas men who are married, um, you, they just bring a whole different energy because you have this woman that is supportive and playing her role in your life and it just elevates you and vice versa. Having a husband can elevate you even if you're already the breadwinner or have more money than your spouse or whatever. It's just something about that, that balance that it makes both of you excel or at least you should be. I would hate to get married and be on the de decline. Could have stayed single, did bad all by myself, honey. So, in this context, there is a distinct difference between surviving and living. Survival is to exist. In the African tradition, to be an adult without a compliment is to survive. Compliment meaning a partner. Um, so, in the African tradition, to be an adult without a compliment is to survive. I feel like I'm in survival mode. I need a man. I want to live. Okay, sorry. They got real personal. Um, to be coupled with one's compliment is to live. So in African tradition, to be an adult without a compliment is to survive. To be coupled with one's compliment is to live. Living is to exist and thrive at full capacity. And full capacity is a community-based definition. For compliments, this living comes with being one in a thriving community. Any person within the African tradition defies his or her completeness within the needs of the community, which nourishes his or her spirit and nurtures his or her personhood. This completeness becomes magnified with complementary relationships. Within the African mind, the connection is simple. I am because we are. The immediate universe within which human complements traditionally work to reach their full potential is their extended communal family. It is an energized and nurturing universe that embraces the specialness of each person making up complementary relationships. It shelters and fortifies the complementary relationships themselves. Traditional African community recognizes and appreciates the necessary function of each unit, individual, couple, family, tribe, and nation. At each each level, personal group, and societal, which makes it whole. Of course, those who see themselves through the extremely individualistic lens of the European mind, whether they are European or not, and whether as single individuals or as lone nuclear couples against each other and the world, have no universe to serve or of which to be a part. As Africans, we must be clear about the universe's intent for individuals. Complementarity, not unisexuality or androgyny. Everything has been created with its complement so that each individually can create perfection together. Therefore, no male is in tune with his feminine side that he is able to be both male and female. No female is so in touch with her male energy that she can both be female and male. That will be insanity. And androgyny does not imply completeness. If anything, it connotates deficiency. 
No one is omniscient. The drive for omniscience is a quirk of patriarchal Western culture and its maturing rival matriarchal counterpart, feminism. This gender-confusing imperative operates on the philosophical mm-hmm. assumption that individuals at least... Hold on, guys. Got an Airbnb guest messaging me. Okay. All right. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Look now, I'm on live. Okay. No one is omniscient. The drive for omniscience is a quirk of a patriarchal Western culture and its maturing rival matriarchal counterpart, feminism. This gender-confusing imperative operates on the philosophical philosophical assumption that individuals at least european individuals are innately qualified to know all direct all and be all in all areas including sex in terms of the intellectual validation of culture no other theoretical assumption better advances the correctness of homosexuality for them but this drive to individualistic superiority and domination is no different for heterosexual europeans for within the European conception of reality, deep, lasting complementarity is an impossibility in relationships. The idea of 50-50 relationships, whether a human possibility or not, is beyond the European imagination, except in fiction or the delusion created for the minds of true believers in the European lie. Genetically embedded cultural imperatives of domination and control make equality in the distribution of power among couple among couples irrational one must dominate while the other is dominated and this problem of male and female balance is reflected in their terminology for close intimate relationships between men and women the european mind understands that opposites attract while african spirit knows that compliments do for Africans, even in those areas where both male and female command a significant amount of expertise, aggressive competition between the sexes does not come into play. Areas in which male and female knowledge and talents overlap allow for the continuous and relatively smooth operation of the family when either spouse is absent. Divine creation saw fit to allocate differences in needed expertise for females and males in order to not overtax the individual with tax beyond the ability of one. This is why male with female unions are more productive than lone individuals could ever be. And at the same time, they lessen the probability that loneliness becomes a logical or desirable choice for adults committed to nation building. As fundamental to the traditional African worldview, complementarity should be and remain central to all African relationships. But even the word central does not adequately capture the force and presence that complementarity should hold in all our enterprises personal relations and it should with and as it should with all else in the universe complementarity as all the other principles of mayat should determine and guide our thought and action with everything animate and inanimate tangible and intangible knowable and unknowable it should unquestionably remain an essential and inextricably intertwined ingredient in our relations with all those we love and care about It should remain deeply folded into the foundation of all our interpretations and creations of reality. To be African is to be complementarily centered in all healthy and meaningful relations. Non-complementarity, non-complementary relations must be shaped into complementary. Obviously, complementarity is an African tradition. Everywhere we look back and around in our untainted traditions, we find clear, unambiguous evidence and its centrality in the lives of African couples and people. Mayat rules because we respect the order and omniscience of the universe. So that is the end of chapter one. I'm going to go into chapter two real quick. Just let me check my phone. I saw some messages come in. Hey, y'all. All right, chapter two, choices. Starts off with a quote. If one comes to a fork of the road and... In a strange country, she stops to think. And that was by Jabo, an African proverb. 
Being in the heat of battle while searching for a soulmate is about as difficult a challenge as any African could imagine. To create a force of one out of two when each person is already individually struggling to correct a corruptive external assault as well as a corrosive enemy within is not an inevitable position, is not an inviolable p position to be in. of the African warrior scholar, there is no greater challenge or reward. However, there is always one obvious constant. For regardless of the degree of difficulty involved in this search for complementary fulfillment, it always involves the simple choice of who will stand beside you as you both go about the business of helping to build a new, powerful African world reality. In making this selection, and it is a selection that should and must be made if you are to be African, there are no secret recipes, no magic potions, only common sense. And unreasonable and unscientific as it may sound, only a close and in-depth study of the individual's mind, activity, and vision along with a gut feeling can be the assurances that you are making the right choice. Only time will tell if warrior spirit has been matched with a complementary warrior spirit. Only time will tell if warrior spirit has been matched with a complementary warrior spirit. And we must be clear on this point because to repeat, warrior spirit must be matched with a complementary with a complementary warrior spirit. Otherwise, failure is inevitable. Both individuals, regardless of their personality, disposition, or tendency to openly engage in combat, must one, know who our enemies are, two, believe that they are responsible for the our or our historically conscious education and elevation of our children, and three, accept their primary, voluntary, often thankless role as activists and builders in the global African community as an honorable, obligatory, priceless privilege, and four, have a clear, undoubting vision of African victory over our enemies. Their political base must be common. For the man as well as the woman, if his spouse is not revolutionary in spirit, he can be progressively sidetracked into a paralyzing fear about the material condition and safety of his family. The inability to find a female warrior mate can leave a male warrior without the emotional capacity to fulfill the natural responsibilities of being a warrior and rearing warriors in this world of manufactured compulsions, obsessions, and insecurities. Warriors settling for mates who have chosen not to be African become easier targets for seduction out of their African vision. Over the years, I've heard both males and females ask where real African-centered mates can be found. We should recognize that in this anti-African, extremely individualistic, and immaturity breeding environment, the problem is not the question. Given these conditions, the question should be expected. It is phenomenal that we have Africans who have chosen to be warriors. It is even more amazing that these warriors are determined to find others of like mind who would be willing to develop intimate relationships with them. Where, wor where warriors should look for compliments will be addressed later, but wherever we look, the problem of finding compliments arises when we become desperate in our search for an African-centered mate. Oh, it's talking to me. Hold on. Where warriors should look for compliments will be addressed later, but wherever we look, the problem of finding compliments arises when we become desperate in our search for an African-centered mate. The search for loving companionship, bred and fueled by a culture that nurtures selfishness and emotional insecurity and teaches that one is not whole or complete without another, leads to confusion and despair. And this, in turn, leads to emotionally costing long-term mistakes. In its effort to keep people separated so that they can be better individually exploited, European business and culture combine to create panic-stricken loners. Such individuals are pushed beyond reason, beyond the fact that if you do not come into a relationship whole, it will not help you get there. This is not to say that compliments cannot make it easier for each other to find their power, but being and becoming whole is a personal realization. When one is solely focused on finding a mate, painful mistake, mistakes are bound to occur. Desperation leads to the unwitting misinterpretation of signals as well as subconscious man manipulation of signals. In the Western cultural climate, it usually leads to a spiritually and emotionally sterile trading of sex for the illusion of love or the illusion of love for sex. Simply put, quick loving a woman means quick not loving a woman. 
And this wisdom applies to men as well as women. Moreover, in the European game of love, pain is naturally associated with this search for completion. So these unnatural problems are not considered abnormal. A broken heart goes with the territory. In Western culture, it is seen as a natural event in the life of individuals searching for love. The freedom to sift through the chaos for unrealistic, ideal partners often ends in emotional pain for the young at heart. As in all other journeys in the desperate search for completion, practicing the art of giving and taking pain becomes as common and natural as giving and taking sex. In fact, as some optimists searching for a positive meaning in all the heartbreak will argue, the broken hearts that accompany dating are practiced for the more emotionally and psychologically traumatizing pain of inevitable divorces. As divorce has come to be considered a normal outcome of marriage, love has become increasingly understood as the expectation of being the victim of a series of painful relationships over the duration of one's life. In intimate male-female relationships, it is expected that one become proficient at giving and receiving pain. Mm. That's an excerpt from something. He got a little key code in here. I would have to go to the back and see where that came from. However, that connection of pain with pleasure is unnecessary in the search for a compliment in the African worldview. It is accepted that pain accompanies or rather complements joy. There is no good without bad. But heartbreak is not taken as a natural part of courtship. And it is also understood that you don't go looking for trouble. Interestingly, experience shows that when one is searching, one is least likely to find a compliment. This should be common sense. A watched pot doesn't boil. The harder you look for something that naturally comes so effortlessly, the more elusive it becomes. Panic is never production in love. Also, the more desperate you become in your search to find easy things, the more willing you become to compromise quality, the more likely you are to settle. And in doing so, the more susceptible you are to being exploded by the bearer of what you seek. Remember, in an exploitive mating situation, the person who falls in love is the one most vulnerable to the whim of the other. That is the primary reason why, in the West, girls are taught the importance of falling in love with boys, and boys are taught to detest the idea of falling in love of being punked trapped caught or whipped one other definite conclusion can be drawn from the collective revolutionary experience about the initial meetings that take place between two potential compliments that lead to the development of lasting warrior relationships they both tend to be doing their work when they first meet this does not mean that they are oblivious to the need for companionship it only means that finding a mate is not their sole priority or an overriding focus. Therefore, using this pattern as a guide, if you are doing your work, your study, your communal involvement, your communicating, attending to the needs of our people as a nation, your compliment will also will be there also. You will find each other. Let your example be your attraction. I'm going to meet a brother at Kwanzaa. In the meantime, brothers know that dreams not acted on speak volumes about one's character. They fester and spill out as contradictions, which reveals one true character. There should never be a disconnect between what a warrior thinks, speaks, and how he acts. And as long as we are at war, we should always think, speak, and act as uncompromised warrior scholars, scholars as Asapho of the First Order. I don't understand what that means. The first question in a woman warrior's mind about any man she studies is of potential. Her question is of your potential strength and power. Are you persistent, resilient? Do you confront tra challenges with intrepidation? Is your vision clear, uncluttered by fantasy? Is it ordered by or historical reason? The answer for her, since she cannot see into your future, is in what you have done and what you are now and what you are doing now relative to in preparation for what you say you intend to do. Do not be confused about the importance in her mind about the relationship between perceived potential and choice of mate. I have long reflected on the accuracy of an elder sister's observation that a man chases a woman until she catches him. Sisters have long been aware of the numerical male-female disparity. Any increasingly smaller pool continues to make for more difficult choices. Disadvantage has the capacity to sharpen one's critical social senses. And their choices have become even harder as the stagnant portion of this pool increases through death, insanity, drugs, and alcohol, playeritis, interracialism, homosexuality, effeminization, and incarceration. Yet, frontline women warrior... 
scholars are also clear that their search is for quality, not quantity. For them, it is not a dating game. It is not a play. It is as serious a business as their day-to-day -day confrontations with our enemies. And on that note, we must put to rest the distracting debate over whether African women should be open to looking into the new slave ships, prisons, for the company of warriors held captive. For it is often in this last, pretty much untapped, stagnant category that we find enormous potential just waiting to be noticed and connected to a dynamic feminine warrior energy. Warriors are warriors wherever they may be. If anything, direct oppression hones stronger, more determined soldiers. And spears doggedly bro unbroken, hell breeds fearlessness. Unfortunately, we often dismiss them to our enemy's benefit. So many unnamed African men held captive daily work against odds most of us can never imagine to strengthen in themselves the revolutionary spirit of the likes of George L. Jackson, Mumia Abu-Jamal, and Sundiata Akoli. Location was never in our story of rebellion against others' efforts to enslave us been as important as mentality. This is a pan-African nation-building effort. And in the eyes of such warrior scholars, prison is simply another majority African-European-dominated country. Furthermore, a conscious mentality is never the sole domain of free Africans. Even understanding the difficulties of access and trust, it is imperative that those sisters who are able and in the position to make the opportunity to seek politicized males who are buried alive in the European nation's penal colonies do so. So he is encouraging relationships with prisoners as long as they have the African warrior mindset. However, outside the challenges and difficulties such an effort entails, some words of caution are in order. Sisters, do not just go out blindly spreading your net in the penal system, hoping to catch, stumble upon, someone with a warrior's consciousness. Again, whether looking on the inside or outside, do not settle. Do not accept anything less than a man, a serious African man. Corruption and manipulation driven by sexual and economic desperation and seeing women and dedicated Africans as weak, deserving prey, kill, skill, li breed, skilled liars. What? Negroes are rampant and all class levels and in social institutions speak with africans who are earnestly working with our brothers in captivity to see who among their contacts may be conscious or is consistently struggling to move in that direction these brothers may be serious possibilities as we cautiously search out the quality of the character and potential warrior scholar mates, there cannot be unreasonable, unwarranted bias against those brothers who are housed in the dungeons created by our destroyers to break their and our spirit. We must also remember that a great many of our most powerful warriors experienced enormous, often superhuman difficulties in life. Those like Omawale, Malcolm X, and Fannie Lou Hamer stand as shining examples of victorious African warrior scholars whose existence and conscious elevation was marked by an incredible struggle. Considering that African women are now being locked up at a faster rate than African men, brothers might also do well to give this option some thought. It should also bring to mind a classic European fear. Europeans definitely fear all of us, even those so broken and confused they think they are them. And they know our women are natural warriors. Just think, if they fear the single African male and single African female individually, then what of their fears of combined, then what? of their fears of combined complementary complementary forces what terror do their minds imagine when they see us working as coupled units and cells raising an even more powerful army of african warrior scholars against them mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna stop there the next chapter is called trust so first chapter was complementary complementary to the second was choices the next two is trust and love and happiness so i will tune in again with you all soon i hope you all enjoyed it i know i did all right y'all have a great rest of your day get your water in peace